Welcome to Home Time. I'm Dean Johnson. And I'm Joanne Liebler. In the video you're about to see, Dean and I will be taking you through all the steps it takes to redecorate a home. We'll show you the basics of decorating, give you some samples of different styles, and we'll show you the Home Time set decorated in three different ways. Home Time is made possible by Chevy Truck, who brings you tough, full-size Chevy pickups for professionals and do-it-yourselfers like you. Chevy S10 pickups, compact, fun, and hardworking. Chevy S10 Blazer, logic and laughter in two or four-wheel drive. Chevy Astro, the van that can. The heartbeat of America, today's Chevy truck. This video is just one in a library of instructional programs designed to assist the viewer in working on a wide range of home improvement projects. And before we begin our program, I want to explain how you can best make use of this educational system. First off, you should watch the tape all the way through to get an idea of the methods, the steps, and the terminology we use. To help familiarize yourself with the terms, we've included a glossary in the project guide. Then you should review the tape again, only this time, Check with your project guide to determine the tools and materials appropriate to your project. Then take the project guide to your local building supply dealer or home center. The people there will be able to assist you, answer questions, and direct you to what you need. There are basically two starting points to consider in home decorating, structural and cosmetic changes. Structural changes usually involve major redos, and that means a big investment of time and money. But if your budget allows for it, you may want to play with the basic size and shape of your room. For instance, you could change a window. Changing these windows into bay windows makes them more interesting visually, and the change adds floor space we can use. We could also consider changing the shape of the ceiling, making a vaulted ceiling, and adding height and drama to our room. There are many more options with structural changes, but that size of project is well beyond the scope of this discussion. We're going to focus on cosmetic changes, and there are five basic areas of cosmetic changes to consider. Furniture scale and placement, color, pattern and texture, and architectural detail, or in our case, lack of it. The thing you need to do when starting a decorating project is to decide on a style that interests you. And in order to find out what it is that you like, you need to look at as many different decorating styles as you can. To assist us in this, we'll be looking at design magazines. Designers suggest you develop a personal folio of looks you like there. or don't like. Right there. When you see something in a magazine, clip it out. It'll help narrow things down for you and make your visits to the showrooms more efficient. We've decided on three different styles for our home time set. Contemporary, eclectic, and European country. Once you've got a style in mind, you need to develop a floor plan. We hired a designer on a consulting basis to come up with three totally different looks and floor plans to show how versatile a single space can be. Each floor plan is drawn to scale, so we have a realistic idea of how pieces will fit into our space. Well, now that we know what we're looking for, we can move on to the next phase of our redecorating project. We can look for some of the colors and fabrics that we'll be using. So, let's go to the showrooms where we'll actually do the selecting. We're going to start the selection process at a place where we can visit more than 200 showrooms at once. This is a design center, a place where they have all the elements of interior design and furnishings under one roof. At a design center, you work with an interior designer. We've hired a designer on a consulting basis to help us coordinate all the elements we need for our rooms. We'll begin at this showroom where we can choose paint, wallpaper, fabric, and architectural millwork. We start by figuring out exactly what it is that we need. And to do this, we'll take a look at our floor plans. Our contemporary room is going to be used as a living room with an entertainment center. We're looking for one fabric for the sectional, another fabric for an accent chair, and a third fabric for the smaller accent chair. Our eclectic style room will be used as a formal living room. Here we're looking for a sofa fabric, a different fabric for each lounge chair, and a fourth fabric for the accent chair. Our European country room will be a living room with space for a game table or a dining table. We want to use a floral design as the main pattern in the room, and we'll be using as many as four or five different fabrics for the other upholstered pieces. Bringing home the things you need for a home project is only one use for a Chevy S10 Blazer. Technically, it's called a sport utility vehicle. 
That means it's a tough truck that works hard and helps you have fun, too. S10 Blazer is available as a two- or four-wheel drive model. And since this one has four-wheel drive, Instatrack is standard. Instatrack lets you shift from freewheeling two-wheel drive into four-wheel drive high and back again without stopping at any speed. You don't have to leave the cab and fool around with the front hubs in mud and bad weather. With Instatrack, you shift on the fly in comfort. If you like a lot of power, S10 Blazer might make your heart beat a little faster. It offers fuel-injected engines up to an available 4.3-liter V6, the popular Vortec V6 with 160 horsepower. So carrying or towing big loads is no problem. This S10 Blazer can handle big loads because it's so tough. It's built on a rugged truck frame and has double wall construction in critical areas such as the hood, doors, fenders, tailgate, and rear side panels. With the available rear seat, S10 Blazer can carry up to four people. And with that seat down, there's over 67 cubic feet of cargo space, so you can carry a lot in one trip. Properly equipped with a 4.3 liter V6 and other required equipment, a two-wheel drive S10 Blazer can tow up to 6,000 pounds. This four-wheel drive model can tow up to 5,500 pounds, and that includes passengers, trailer, and cargo. Whether you're towing or hauling a big load, you'll like having a rear-wheel anti-lock brake system, or ABS for short. It's standard on S10 Blazer and is designed to help you make smooth, stable stops. On four-wheel drive models, ABS operates only when the truck's in two-wheel drive. If you drive an S10 Blazer only once, you'll know why people who own one can become very attached to it. You can use it as a truck, a car, a station wagon, or an off-road vehicle. Whether it's a two- or four-wheel drive model, an S10 Blazer can do a lot for you and do it all well. Because it's from today's Chevy truck, the heartbeat of America. In each of our rooms, we're using different combinations of fabrics. In order for them to work well together, the color should complement each other and the pattern should vary in scale. Anytime you start to put a room together, you need to select one major fabric to build on. And after that decision's been made, you typically need to find several more fabrics to use in the room. This is our starting point. It's a large-scale overall floral pattern. The design is printed on a two-tone cream background. The colors in the design are green, three shades of cinnamon, a creamy yellow, and a pewter. Because of the large-scale design, and because this fabric is a lightweight cotton, it would work best on a large item, like window treatments, a sofa, or a large chair. This floral design also has a two-tone cream background. The flowers share the same colors as the large floral, but the design is much smaller in scale. There's a separation of space between each flower, which creates a simpler overall design. So this print doesn't compete with the design of the large floral. This fabric would work on a smaller piece of furniture. Our third fabric is a bold needle-pointed stripe. It's a nice contrast to the floral pattern. This fabric pulls out cinnamon as its main color, with cream and pewter as accent colors. Now, it's not necessary that each fabric match every color, but it is necessary that they share some colors. This needle-pointed fabric is also a good choice because it's a heavy weave, and this is going to give us a nice contrast in texture compared to these lightweight cottons we've already selected. And finally, this dark green fabric. The dark green came from the floral design. The texture is created by weaving three accent colors into the dark green background. This is called a tattersall check. This design is an even smaller scale than the previous fabrics, so it doesn't compete with them. The dark backgrounds of these last two fabrics balance out the light backgrounds of our first two choices. Now let's take a look to see what happens when things go wrong, and we'll work with our same overall floral design. Got anything in there? Well, let's see. Well, here we go. Here's a second floral design. It has the same greens as this one, same cinnamons, and it's on a light cream background. But as you can see, the scale of the overall designs is so close to that of the first fabric that they tend to compete. Now let's take a look at this fabric. Oh yeah, that's not going to work. Yeah, but again, the colors are workable. We've got the cinnamons and the green and the creams. But again, the design is so close in scale to our main fabric that it competes. It's actually distracting. Now let's see what else we've got here. Ah, here's a stripe to break up the floral pattern. We've matched some colors, cinnamon, green, beige. But there are certain colors in this print that are just too bright to go with the floral, like this teal. It doesn't quite match the green in our major print. And there's a problem with the pattern. The stripe is way too big, too close in scale to the floral. And the abstract Aztec style of the print is just not appropriate for our floral. 
We want the fabrics to share some colors. We want the patterns to vary in scale. And we also want some different textures for a little variety. And these are things we're going to keep in mind when we select our fabrics. We've talked about how colors work together in fabrics. Now we want to talk about another color fundamental, selecting colors. The bottom line on picking colors is that it's an extremely personal decision. You should pick colors that you really enjoy and that you're comfortable with. And one thing to be aware of is that each year new colors come into vogue. And they may be quite exciting and you may want to work with them. But not all manufacturers use them and as a result some of them can be difficult to match. Also colors, like any other element in decorating, can become outmoded and dated. So if you want something that'll last, it's wise to be careful in using current colors. And don't feel that you're tied to certain colors if you choose a certain decorating style. If you're trying to reproduce a historically accurate period room, you might want to work with colors that were used during that time. So here's a color I think we're looking for. Oh. But if you're not trying to make a historically accurate statement, you can use any color you want. Work with any style you'd like. There really aren't any rules when it comes to making the initial color choices. Once you've decided on some colors that you like, you need to learn how to use them throughout the entire house. Just as we wanted some of our fabrics to share colors, we want the different rooms of our house to share colors too. We want to create a color continuity between the rooms. And to show you how to do this right, we're going to take two sample rooms and see how they should work together. We'll start with the fabrics we picked out earlier. Now we need to complete a room before we talk about continuity. So we'll finish up this one by selecting a wall covering. And because there are so many patterns in the room already from these fabrics, we want to keep the wall simple. So we're looking for paint. The goal is to find a color that'll work with all the fabrics. Now if the fabrics are matched properly, you've already got a color scheme and you just need to find a paint color in that range. For these fabrics, a pale shade of the cinnamon or a pale shade of the green will complement all of the fabrics. Or a lighter or darker shade of the same color will also work. Now at the same time, you can stay in the same color families and still not have a workable color. For instance, this green has too much yellow in it and this green's too bright. The same can go with the cinnamon. This cinnamon color is too light and this one's too bright. If we had brighter colors in our fabrics, these samples would be fine. But because all of our colors are much more muted, we need a tone like these samples to complement the fabrics. Now it's time to start on the second room. And here's where the continuity comes in. We want the second room to share some of the same colors as the first room. That doesn't mean we end up with a house decorated all in one color. We could use an accent color from the first room as the main color in the second room. The main goal here is that all the rooms flow from one to the other. Well, let's see how these fabrics work with our first room. The main fabric in the first room is a floral with a light colored background. So to balance that out, we're going to use a geometric with a dark background in the adjoining room. That background color is taken from an accent color in the first room, the dark green. This fabric also shares the cinnamon and the creamy yellow. The other nice thing about this fabric is that it introduces a new color, blue. Our next fabric is a smaller scale basket weave. This time, the main color is cinnamon, and that's the same color on the walls of our first room and in some of the fabrics. Again, we've got the creamy yellow and the green. The third fabric in our adjoining room is a solid textured creamy yellow. The light color balances out the fabrics in this room and is one of the accent colors in the first room. Now we need to finish this room with a wall covering selection. In the last room, we use paint. In this room, we'll use wallpaper. These are some of the most common treatments used in any design scheme. Whichever method, you'll accomplish some important things. The wall covering sets the mood and pulls the whole design scheme together. Ready? Yeah. I see you're talking about oh, now. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Not only can wallpaper create ambience, it can also work a little magic on a room. And the pattern of the paper can have dramatic effects. For example, a vertical pattern like this can lift up a ceiling, giving it height. However, a horizontal pattern will actually lower the ceiling and create a sense of space. Yeah. An open pattern like this latticework, something that you feel like you could see right through, will push the walls out, create the feeling of space. By using a non-directional pattern like this floral all over the room, even the ceiling, you'll create a sense of continuity and it'll make the room seem larger. In picking paper for the second room, we need to consider two things how the paper works in that room, and how it works in relation to the first room that we've put together. So for continuity, we're going to keep in mind the colors from that first room. Now let's take a look at a couple papers that work. This wallpaper has a creamy yellow background. 
The color matches the fabrics in both rooms and contrasts with the dark backgrounds in two of our fabrics for this room. The pattern design is the same color as the wall color from the adjoining room. And the pattern itself is very simple, so it doesn't compete with the patterns in these fabrics. Another wallpaper that would work is this green all over leaf print. The green matches the greens we've been working with so far, and the pattern design is small enough so that it doesn't compete with these fabrics. Now we'll show you some papers that won't work with our rooms, and why. The colors in this paper are very close. It's got the creamy yellow and several shades of cinnamon. But the blue is too bright, and so is the green. And the pattern scale is too large, and the overall design is too busy to work with these fabrics. The colors in this paper are perfect. The greens, cinnamons, and blues all match the fabrics in this room. The problem is, this paper is just too bold and bright and competes with our muted fabrics. To keep the color flow from one room to another, you do need to maintain the basics. But don't be afraid to introduce new colors, either totally new colors or different shades of colors you've already selected. When you're finished, if you follow these guidelines, you should not only have a house that has a lot of variety, but also a sense of unity throughout. Now we're ready to consider another element of design, architectural millwork. We have various samples of millwork and moldings to choose from to create some visual interest. As we mentioned earlier, our set location is fairly plain. The ceilings and walls meet in a simple square corner, so we can add some molding to create some character. Moldings come in woods or polyurethanes, and they come in a variety of shapes and designs. We want one that will be adaptable and go with our three design styles, contemporary, European country, and eclectic. So, we'll use a simple design like this one. The molding doesn't have a lot of intricate detail, but it has enough detail so that we can paint certain parts of it to give it a different look for each room. And because it's appropriate for the style, we're going to use even more architectural millwork in the European country room. And we'll be installing this wall molding to frame in the area above the fireplace. Well, we've shown you what's involved in making the right background choices for decorating a room. Now we're going to go around the showroom one last time and make our final selections for the home time rooms we're decorating. Ah, Jojo, what do you think about this one? Pretty close? That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. Oh, that's bland. Oh, we like that's this paper. Ooh, that's good. Oh, that's no great. No way. Do you like these, all those flowers? What do you mean, no way? No, I don't know. What else have you got? Oh, see, now there's oh, a new back there. That's perfect. That's yeah. the one we want. Yeah? That's perfect. I can see that. Oh, after we've made all of our final selections, we put together what's called a sample board. The sample board is our floor plan with fabric and colors attached to it to represent each piece. This is a very handy tool, but even after you have one assembled, it's important to stay flexible. We may not end up using the actual fabrics or furnishings, but one thing that we have accomplished at this point is we have a real good idea of the style we're trying to create and the approximate size of each piece of furniture. The European country room is a formal living room, and our choice of fabrics reflects that formality. A polished cotton, a linen damask, even a velvet. Our wallpaper is a large print floral with a plum background. We'll use the same print on a fabric for the window treatments, and the wallpaper and matching window treatments set the mood for a room with a dark, rich background. The sofa fabric counterbalances the wallpaper and window treatments because the fabric has a light background and a very color-intense design. The pattern is a larger scale than our first major print. The emerald fabric for the lounge chair and ottoman is so bright and clear, it'll be a beautiful contrast against the dark background of the walls and windows. 
We'll also use a plum velvet for another chair. It's the same shade as the background, but because it's velvet, the nap of the fabric adds depth to the color. And for the French lounge chair, we use a very subtle cream fabric. For our contemporary room, we're going to have some fun by creating a jungle theme. We'll use something like this cream-colored chenille for the sectional. The chenille is woven to create a tone-on-tone -tone plaid pattern that will add texture to our room. The light color is a good choice since this is a large piece of furniture, and it won't appear to take up as much space as it would if it were covered in a dark, busy pattern. For the armless chair, we'll use a linen stripe in cream and cocoa. The stripe brings in a contrasting color, and the pattern scale works well with the plaid effect of the chenille. This is our wildest choice. We've got a splashy, contrasting two-tone zebra print, perfect for an accent piece set off by itself. For our wallpaper, we've got an overall mottled, swirling design in various shades of cocoa. The color is fairly neutral, and the pattern creates a definite but subtle background for the room. And for the window treatments, we've got a large hand-painted diagonal stripe. The colors are a gunmetal gray, black, and cocoa on a pale cocoa background. The colors in the pattern pull several elements in the room together. And the stripe is a larger scale pattern than any other pattern in the room, so it isn't competing with any other fabrics. We'll paint the millwork a dark cocoa and the brick around the fireplace a creamy color. The overall feel for this room is sort of exotic. The fabrics are informal, suitable for the family living room combination we want for this room. In our eclectic design, we've got major prints for the sofa, rugs, and window treatments. Everything else will be in solid colors because these furnishings speak for themselves. For the sofa, We'll use a blue, green, and cream floral pattern on a black background. This is the major print in the room. For one lounge chair, we'll use a solid black, which complements the sofa. For the other lounge chair, we'll use a solid cream canvas to counterbalance the sofa and the chair. For the accent chair, we've got a solid black seat cover to create as little contrast as possible with the chair it goes next to. And for the windows, we're looping fabric around a pole to create a swag. So we want a fabric with plenty of color and a definite pattern. We're planning a floral stripe, which will bring in the additional colors we want. Finally, for the walls, a seafoam green paint color that ties in with all the rest of the colors. Now that we have everything in place, we want to make sure to mark all of our samples, noting the manufacturer and identification for the material, taking any more measurements that we need, and double-checking our cost. We're ready for the next step, and that means visiting a few other showrooms for floor coverings and furnishings. Here are some things to keep in mind when looking for rugs. A rug can be room size, going wall to wall. It can be limited to a specific conversation area, or it can be an accent piece to highlight an area of the room. It can blend into the furnishings, or it can be used to create a focal point. For our contemporary room, we're going to look for something unusual. Since there isn't much color in that room, we need to add variety by adding texture. We're going to do that by putting down a natural fiber matting. This matting is made out of sisal fibers, which come from a tropical plant. And besides adding texture, it'll also protect the hardwood floors. And this is going to give us some versatility in our contemporary room, because then we can put an area rug on top of the matting, or just use it by itself. These mattings come in a variety of styles and patterns. For our purposes, we're going to use a fairly neutral color with a very simple weave. In our eclectic room, we don't have that many patterns going, so we want to add color and design. Wait a minute. This rug works because it has a dramatic but simple pattern. It's on a black feel. The black is in our sofa and two of the chairs. And the floral design shares the same colors that are in our room. Another interesting thing about this rug is that it adds texture because it's hand carved. That means the pile has been clipped around the design elements to emphasize the pattern. We'll also be using an antique runner which will go behind the sofa table. This rug is perfect because its intense background colors pulls the same color from the drapery fabric. The scale of the geometric pattern works well within the other patterns in the room. In our European country room, we want a rug with a light background because there are so many dark colors in the room already. Hmm. We want the colors and patterns to be subtle. Well, let's see. The overall design of this rug should be simple, so it doesn't compete with all the patterns we've got going in this room. We'll also use a small Chinese oriental rug with a center medallion under the writing desk in our European country room. Well, there are a couple of things other than the way they look to make oriental rugs an attractive buy. They hold their value well, and dealers will often let you trade them in on new purchases. Well, now we've got all of our design plans together. Let's
head back to the studio and see how it all looks up to this point. The first work we need to do is to put up a background element that will remain in all three rooms, and that's architectural millwork. Millwork is a very versatile element in design, and though you'll see it in all three of our rooms, the effect will be different each time. This molding is made of polyurethane, but the installation is the same as with wood molding. First, cut the pieces to fit, then nail them in place. Let's see what's involved in putting the background elements in place for our three styles. We'll start with our eclectic design. First, we're going to paint the ceiling in the architectural millwork, then the walls, the brilliant green color we chose. Next, we install the swag window treatments and roll out the oriental rugs. These are all the background elements of our eclectic design. The tone for the room is set, and we can see how the colors feel. Next, we'll look at the same elements, but in a very different style for the contemporary room. And again, we'll start with our original background. This time, we're going to paint the trim, the fireplace surrounding brick, as well as the architectural millwork. Now we put up our wallpaper with the all-over pattern. Then install the window treatments. Got it over there? Yeah. And our primary textural element, the sisal floor covering. There we go. We've established a neutral background for this style. We'll come back a little later and create the theme with our furnishings and accessories. But first, we'll put the background elements for our European country room in place. And here's where we've got the most patterns. To add interest, we start by installing a frame of architectural millwork over the fireplace. Then we paint the millwork. We'll paint the ceiling millwork in two colors to enhance the design. Next, we paper the room in the large floral print and put up window treatments with a matching pattern. And we roll out our oriental rugs. With all the background elements in place, we can get a feel for our European country style. Very rich, with lots of pattern and deep colors. Now look at how they compare. First, the eclectic style. Then the contemporary style. And the European country style. With our backgrounds finished, we can now furnish our rooms. But before we do that, let's take a look at several different decorating styles. We're going to begin in a room decorated in the style of 18th century Europe. Each piece in this room is recreated from an original piece found in castles and manor homes throughout England, Scotland, and Ireland. The 18th century covers several different style periods in English furniture. There was a lot of intricate detailing and fretwork and elaborate carving, lots of moldings on the furniture pieces themselves, and lots of curvilinear lines in the furniture design. You'll find elaborate embellishments frequently in pieces of this period, including some unique features, like secret compartments. One 18th century development that's still popular is the wing chair with these curved half sides. This one's covered in white damask. Damask is a fabric in which the pattern is formed by the weave of the fabric. Damask, silks, and velvets were typical fabrics used in the 18th century. Now take a look at the legs and you'll see another style of the time. This is a cabriole leg with its characteristic curve. It's in the Queen Anne style, little ornamentation, and it ends in a pad foot. Draperies of this style were typically heavy to help control drafts and were adorned with tassels or fringe. This accent lamp is representative of an 18th century candelabra. Picture frames were typically large scale, ornate, and gilded. This room is decorated in the traditional American style, also in the 18th century. Colonial craftsmen modeled their work after the English, but American style and culture began to be expressed more and more. In general, parts of the design get simpler. The lines are straighter with fewer embellishments, although you still find beautiful carvings on individual pieces. Inlaid veneers were common on wood pieces. Mahogany was a commonly used wood, and you'll find brass used as hardware. And the artwork on the walls here is also a reflection of the times. 18th century art was representational. Well, for instance, these botanical paintings are typical examples. This room is decorated in 18th century French and is very provincial. There are lots of gentle curves and decorative carvings. 
The colors were reminiscent of materials used at the time. Farmhouses painted in okras, red tile roofs, and fields of wheat. These pieces have a country kind of feel to them, and that's typical for this period style. Furniture makers of the time emphasized romanticism. Artisans used every opportunity to express themselves and show their carving skills. Floral patterns were common. The look in this room is very different from the others. It's taken from three oriental dynasties that span centuries. In this Far East style, you'll see more geometric cube forms, angular and geometric designs, lots of relief carving, and repeated examples of chinoiserie. That's any painting which is demonstrative of Chinese culture. Our last room is done in a northern Italian design. It's a rich, lush look that has lots of elaborate carvings in walnut. The northern Italian design is borrowed from the Renaissance, Baroque, Rococo, and Neoclassic periods. In this style, you see lots of painted designs. In general, lots of extravagance witnessed in whimsical curves and ornate carvings. We've just seen five different decorating styles. Now let's go back to the studio and put together the three styles we're creating. How about the job on those curtains, no, it's huh? it's looking good. Well, we've been trying to stress all along that decorating is a very personal and subjective thing. And that's probably best demonstrated by the next style we're going to show you, our eclectic style. All right. Let's say you don't want to limit yourself to any one particular style because you enjoy so many. Well, that's fine. By pulling pieces together in one space, pieces which represent many styles, you create what's called an eclectic style. For instance, we're using a neoclassical console table behind the sofa. Right about there. Yeah, wait, gotta find the and an abstract contemporary oil painting on this wall. We have an 18th century English secretary desk with hand painted chinoiserie. We have a lounge chair that's definitely Art Deco. And an 18th century English Hepplewhite armchair. There are more styles in this room than the ones we've named, but the room works, largely because of the color. In an eclectic design like this, color will be an important ingredient because it unifies the entire room design. Before we put together our next room, here's a look at how we pick some of our furnishings and accessories for our design styles. According to our floor plans, we had specific items in mind when we set out to shop. Well, for example, we knew we wanted to create height in one corner of our eclectic room to balance the grouping in the opposite corner. This could have been accomplished by a low chest and a vertical wall hanging or perhaps a single upright piece. This 18th century secretary is perfect for our eclectic room. It has the height we need for the wall it's being placed against, and the colors of the finish work well with our overall scheme. When you actually set out to do your shopping, be organized by including a categorized list with measurements of all the items you're looking for, as well as samples that will help you make color selection. And remember to stay flexible. You may find something you didn't expect to see, and it might be that perfect piece to finish off your room. Hey, Deej, take a look at this. Isn't this just the size we're looking for? Say, so, Jojo, how about this one? Oh, it's pretty slick, huh? It's comfortable. No, I think it's the right size. I like this. Now let's talk about our contemporary style. What's considered contemporary keeps changing, and that's because contemporary design styles either use totally new ideas or incorporate new elements into the old designs. The new element may be the material in the piece, or it may be a simplification of the style itself. Let's get some furniture in here. All right. In general, a contemporary style will be cleaner with less ornamentation. There seems to be a greater emphasis on shape 
and a sense of whimsy in some of the designs. First, we put down a good example of whimsy, a canvas hand-painted zebra rug. On top of that, we've got a coffee table with a black metal base and a glass top. The use of metal and glass is seen frequently in contemporary design. We're using a sectional sofa as the main seating in the room. Modular furniture is definitely a contemporary innovation. And in this accent chair, we have a good example of a traditional style with a contemporary interpretation. This is an 18th century Regency style chair with an unusual fabric, a fake zebra print. The furnished room is certainly contemporary. The design element that creates the most interest is texture. Color is less important. We've got texture everywhere, on the floor, in the sofa table, in the sofa fabric. And we've used a variety of materials, leather, metals, wood, and glass. Now let's finish our last design style, which is European country. Floral prints are used everywhere in this style, although you'll often see a mixture of a lot of different patterns. The finishes are distressed and the overall impression more casual than some of our traditional European styles we saw earlier. In general, this style is rich with a variety of design elements. Lots of colors, patterns, textures, and accessories. In one corner, we've got a lounge chair and ottoman. The color of the fabric is important. It's so intense that the chair anchors this corner of the room. The five-legged table next to the chair is a very simple design. In another corner is our game table. The light distressed finish of the wood and the woven chair seats give the set a casual feel. We've got a large armoire that we can use for an entertainment center. The decorative carving on the top is typical of our style. We're using a very simple writing desk behind the sofa. The desk has very little ornamentation and the dark wood contrasts nicely with our other furnishings. In the finished room, there are a lot of things going on. Lots of colors, plums, emeralds, creams, and wood tones. Lots of patterns, seven of them in all. Lots of textures, woods, woven fibers, a carved rug, and lots of fabrics on the upholstered pieces, the table, and the windows. In general, we've created a very rich, inviting room. Now let's see how these rooms compare. First, the eclectic room. Very formal and used as a living room only. Next, the contemporary room, a semi-formal living room and family room. Finally, the European country room, a multi-purpose room which can be used as a living room and a dining room. We've shown you this space decorated in three different styles. Now as part of the space planning, we wanted to go into a little more detail on furniture scale and placement. For our European country design, we use the fireplace wall as our focus point. From there, we arrange pieces around it to create an intimate conversation area. We balance the seating by placing an oversized lounge chair in one corner and two smaller chairs in the other. Also for balance, we placed an armoire on the opposite side of the room. And finally, the writing desk and game table are in the room to lend it more function and versatility. Those same principles of balance need to be kept in mind when you're accessorizing. Well, for instance, the light colored frames on the pictures above the fireplace provide a nice contrast to the dark background on our wallpaper. Plus, they're small enough in scale so that they don't steal focus from the architectural detail or the windows. Well, now we've got a rough idea on how to put it all together. Let's break it down in terms of what it costs. First, you need to decide who, if anybody, you're going to hire. If you're planning on making major structural changes, you might want to hire an architect or a building designer. If your changes are strictly cosmetic, then an interior designer can help avoid making costly mistakes. Then sort out your expenses, starting with the big budget items like floor coverings, then furniture, wall coverings, all the way down to small items like accessories. If you're working with a designer, the designer will give you an itemized list of everything needed to complete the project, including prices. You can work with a designer on a consulting basis only, and if you do, make a list of things you'll need to have to work with a designer efficiently. Well, for instance, you should have an organized list of questions that you want to ask. You need to know what you want, and questions will help you define that. Blueprints are accurate room measurements, including your current floor plans. And don't forget to measure the windows. Photographs of the rooms you want to redecorate. Take the pictures from several different angles. Photographs of the furniture you know you're going to want to use, and measurements of those pieces. And your personal folio of ideas, or looks that you like. And that brings us to the most important element in any decorating project, and that's what you like. Your personal preference is the most important factor to consider when it comes time to redo a room. 
Decorating styles may have certain traits that define them, but you're the one who decides how they get used in your home. So have fun with it. We'll see you next time on Home Time. Home Time is made possible by Chevy Truck, who brings you tough, full-size Chevy pickups for professionals and do-it-yourselfers like you. Chevy S10 pickups, compact, fun, and hardworking. Chevy S10 Blazer, logic and laughter in two or four-wheel drive. Chevy Astro, the van that can. The heartbeat of America, today's Chevy truck. Before you start a major home project on your own, getting a tough new Chevy truck to help out is a smart thing to do. The best way to check out the model that interests you is to take a test drive at your local Chevy dealer. And here's a tip on how to buy your new Chevy truck and get the options you want, while saving some money too. Ask your dealer about preferred equipment groups of options. There are special packages of options most truck buyers want, and usually order individually. Options that can include popular items such as air conditioning and automatic transmission. When you buy them as part of a preferred equipment group, you can save a lot. You'll get them at savings based on manufacturer's suggested retail prices compared to the same options purchased separately. It's more economical for Chevy to offer you options as a packager group. Chevy saves and passes the savings on to you. You'll enjoy the options while you own your Chevy truck, and they can add to its resale or trade-in value. So any way you look at it, preferred equipment groups of options are a good idea and they're available on all new Chevy full-size pickups, S10 pickups, and S10 Blazers. Your Chevy dealer has all the latest details. Preferred equipment groups of options are another money-saving idea from today's Chevy truck, the heartbeat of America.